Hello everybody, hope you're having a good day today. It's a day and have another opportunity to do something good for God. So we encourage you to do that. The title of the lesson today is Christians Should Be. And what are Christians supposed to be? Well, there, there's many things. And the Bible teaches us what we should be. And we're not going to learn this overnight. Uh, nobody's going to be a full-blown Christian overnight. But we do have a lifetime to learn these things. And we should not be putting these things off. We should be learning as soon as we can what we're supposed to be and get busy doing that. And that will help ensure our home in heaven. So, let's let's get into these and look at these. Uh, I originally got this the list from, uh, I think it was Gareth Clare, many, many years ago. And I've just expanded it over the years. Uh, and so, there's several things we should be. We should be doers. Christians should be doers. You know, James 1, 22 and 25, it says, be doers of the word, not merely hearers. And so when we talk about that, I mean, the doers are the ones who obey God. And that's what he is uh, talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. <coughs> oh, boy. Sorry about that. <coughs> Sinus is going crazy this morning. Okay, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, those who obey God, we need to be doers of what God says, not just hearers. And Revelation 22, blessed are those who have done. And that's what we need to do. You know, if, if Hebrews 5, verse 8 and 9, talks about Christ being the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. And then, of course, Matthew 7, 21, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven. I mean, obeying God. That's what it all comes down to. And we need to be doers here. <clears throat> and even Peter said, told the council, we must obey God rather than man. And so in, in, Acts, in Acts 6, 46, we're told to do what Jesus says. That's what we need to do. And probably the best advice anybody ever gave, <clears throat> and you can mark this down from John chapter 2 and verse 5. The mother of Jesus looked at the servants and said, whatever he says to you, do it. <coughs> All right, and then so, because uh, we know that those who don't do it, God doesn't appreciate. You know, Proverbs 28 and verse 9 says, whoever turns away their ear, from serving God, even their prayer is an abomination to God. So we need to be doers uh, of everything that God tells us to do. And believe me, he has given us a lot of things that we should do. And uh, too many Christians, I think, uh, go through life having accomplished the five steps of hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized, and they think they've accomplished everything they need to do. Oh, no, there's a whole lot more than that. All right. Another thing Christians are supposed to be are wise. You know, James 1, 5 says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who will supply it abundantly. And we're, we're told in 2 Timothy three fifteen that Scripture makes us wise unto salvation. So we said, listen and pay attention to the Scriptures. And Jesus warned the 12 and the 70 when he sent them out, says, Be wise as servants and harmless as doves. In Matthew 7, 24 and 25, he talks about the two foundations. A wise builder builds upon a solid foundation. And that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a wise builder. And we need to build on the right foundation. Of course, 1 Corinthians three eleven tells us what that foundation is. Christ. And then, of course, Christ and the Apostles' teaching. All right. And then, of course, the foundation, uh, Jesus. And back in Proverbs 30, and verse 11, it says, He that winneth souls is wise. So if we can help other people find the pathway to God and get on that right pathway and encourage them to do so, I mean, we demonstrate some wisdom in our lives. If we don't ever try and teach anybody that's not, that's basically foolishness. 
Alright, another thing Christians are supposed to be is ready. You know, Peter said, be ready to give an answer, 1 Peter 3.15. Give an answer of the hope that's in us. And, and how is anybody going to think to ask you that question? Well, it's kind of obvious you're going to have to demonstrate it in your life that you have a hope of salvation uh, before anybody's going to ask you. So you've got to be living the life of a Christian before anybody's going to ask you about the hope that you have. And, you know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show ourselves approved, handling the scriptures correctly. So, yeah, we've got to be ready to do that as well. In Titus 3.1, uh, the people are supposed to help others. The older teach the younger. And one thing he said there in Titus 3.1 remind them to be ready for every good work and so that's what people need to do everybody needs to be ready for every good work and galatians 6 10 says take every opportunity to do good for others especially those of the household of faith we've got to do good unto all men and we've got to be ready to do that uh, in Matthew 24, 44, Jesus said, be ready for the Lord's return. So that's another thing we do. We've got to sit here hastening for that day, longing for that day, looking for that day, and we just need to be ready for it. We've got to get ourselves ready. Uh, Romans 1, 15, Paul says, I'm ready to teach you. A and so, and he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel in the next verse. A and so, yeah, yeah. Uh, we all need to be ready to teach others as we have the opportunity. And when Jesus says, go out and make disciples of all nations, and he continues on later and says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And so, yeah, we need to be ready. Another thing Christians should be is forgiving. Now, I may step on some toes here, but... Uh, you probably need it if you feel like your toes are being stepped on. You know, we're, we're taught in the Bible to forgive others. You know, some people have a hard time forgiving someone who has mistreated them or done something or done them wrong. Ephesians 4.32 says, be forgiving to one another. And that's what we're supposed to be as Christians. Uh, Matthew 18, 21, 22 I mean, someone says, well, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? Jesus responded, 70 times seven. All right, you want to count that out? Okay, 490 times. If someone wrongs you that many times, first of all, you're hanging around the wrong person. Uh, I mean, that ought to be quite obvious. Uh, but we, we still have to be willing to forgive. And some people just can't do that. Some people hold grudges and they harbor animosity towards fellow saints and other Christians, and that's just not right. And they're going to have to answer for that. In Luke 17, 3, yeah, we, we may have to rebuke, but we need to be quick to forgive. And, and so we have to be aware of that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we have to chastise a brother because they've done something wrong, but we've got to be ready to forgive them. You know, Paul there in 1 Corinthians 5, he says, you need to rebuke this brother and separate from him and shame him, and then we see the evidence in 2 Corinthians, this brother had done that. And that then Paul had to tell him, but now accept him. Re, I mean, forgive him and then accept him back. Uh, because you don't want him be, to be so sorrowful that he does something drastic. All right, and Jesus tells us, Matthew 18, 35, we will be treated in the same way we have treated others. So think about that. And, and yeah, be forgiving. Forgive others. Uh, because as long as you, you remember what they did to you, they've got you captive. You know that. They, they have you captive. They run your life. But if we can just forgive and move on, I mean, we, we don't have to worry about that. We can concentrate on other things. The things that God wants us to concentrate upon. I mean, about spiritual thoughts setting our mind on things above and things like that. Okay, Christians should be steadfast. Now, steadfast, firm, fixed, settled, established. That's what Webster says is the meaning of the word steadfast. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Yeah, 
Be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. All right. Um, so we need to be steadfast there. Now in Acts 2.42 we read, And the disciples continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine. That means they continued it. I mean, they were firmly fixed in it. They were settled in it. They were established in the faith. And that's what we're, Paul told the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Stand fast in the faith. Learn the faith and then stand fast in it. Don't waver. Don't let your faith waver. Don't be tossed to and fro, like we read there in Ephesians chapter 4. All right, 2 Timothy 3, 14 we're commanded, you continue faithful in the Word. We need to be faithful in the Word of God. That means we have to know what the Word of God is and do those things it tells us to do. If we don't study God's Word and know what's in God's Word, how can we be faithful in it? I mean, just a question you might want to ask yourself. Another thing, Christians are to be watchful. Yeah, Matthew 26, 41, Jesus told Peter and James to watch, but they fell asleep. You know, three times this happened. And he was kind of put out with them, but uh, they did so. But we're not supposed to. How many times in the scripture says, awake, you sinner? I mean, I mean, James chapter 4 tells us that. Uh, I mean, so we're supposed to awake from our sleep. We should not be sleeping. Uh, we don't have time to sleep right now. Jesus said the harvest needs to take place now. I mean, wait until nighttime before you sleep. Revelation 3, 2 and 3. I mean, the church at Sardis was told to keep watch. Yeah, they had some issues, and some of them were not doing what they should have been doing, and so we need to keep watch. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, Paul told them to watch and be sober. I mean, pay attention to what's going on around you. You know, in Ephesians, uh, uh, Paul told them to walk circumspectly. In other words, as you walk, pay attention to what's going on around you. I mean, that's good advice. Even in this world, you know, people walking around, uh, people going to their cars and carrying packages. Keep your eye out. Watch what's going on around you so that you're not surprised. 2 Timothy 4, 5 watch in all things i mean that's what we're supposed to do is watch out for all things he just talked about those who would not endure sound doctrine and turn aside to the fables and the myth so but we're supposed to watch all right something else christians are to be peaceable yeah i mean this kind of goes along with the forgiving part but we're supposed to be a peaceable people romans 12:18. And we need to be at peace with all men. And we need to seek peace with all men. Romans 14 and verse 19. And Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with all men. I mean, that's everybody. Try and get along with everybody if you can. <clears throat> and yeah, some people, they make it very difficult. I realize that. But that doesn't mean we have to treat them the same way. Seek peace with people. Pursue it. You know, 1 Peter 3, 11. And then Matthew 5, 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers who can bring others together and remove the animosity between them. And 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, we should pray for peace. I mean, so, and we should be praying for all men everywhere. We should be praying for peace. I mean, peace is a rare commodity these days, even in our own homes, even in our own communities. I mean, there, there's a lot of tension going on. And there's not that much peace. So we need to be praying for peace. Another thing, Christians should be of the same mind. And true Christians are. They have their minds set on doing God's will the way God said to do it. You know, so Philippians 3.16, Paul says, let us walk by the same rule. And 1 Corinthians 1.10, be of the same mind. And don't be divided. He heard that divisions exist. Don't be that way. Be of the same mind. Have the same thoughts. Have the same attitude. You know, uh, <clears throat> Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4, says we should be of that same mindset. 
and we should be considerate of others. That's in verse 4. In John 17, 20 and 21, that they all may be united in us, as Jesus prayed. I mean, unity is going to exist, but unity can only exist on the basis of truth. I mean, if, you, if, you, if unity is described by lies and deceptions, then there's no unity there. It's just pure chaos. Even though people think they're getting along, they're just chaos and all that. In Psalm 133 and verse 1, he says, How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. <clears throat> and, yeah, if, if, if the whole congregation can be united in thought and, and goals and, and effort, then it's a great thing. It is good and pleasant. But when people have different ideas and they have animosity towards each other, there is not any unity there. All right. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Christians should be faithful. I mean, uh, that, that should go without saying, shouldn't it? You know, Revelation 2.10 we're told to be faithful until death. Revelation 14, 13, blessed are those who die in the Lord. And that means you got to stay faithful in the Lord. And Jesus said, we must endure until the end. I mean, we must endure in our faith until the end, Matthew 10, 22. And James 1, 12 warns us, yeah, you must endure temptation. I mean, it, it's going to be there. So you must be faithful. We must be faithful in all things. Why? Because, well, God is faithful. God is faithful to himself. Jesus was faithful, and he set the example for us. So we need to learn to be faithful in all things. You know, we could go on and talk about many other things uh, that, we, that Christians need to be. And if you want to start learning them, just start reading the New Testament. I mean, read what Jesus said we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to treat, treat others and the way we're supposed to live. And then look at what the, the history of the early church in Acts tells us. And then look at the epistles beginning in Romans all the way until the end. And even in Revelation, there's things we can learn that we should apply to ourselves of what we should be be faithful until death. I mean, so that, that's what we need to do. And so we're, we're taught in the scriptures that salvation is in Christ. It's only in Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, there in John 14 and verse 6. And so we need to come into Christ. How do we get into Christ? Well, the scriptures tells us uh, we need to be baptized into Christ. We're baptized in the name of Jesus. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and for the remission of our sins. We're baptized into Christ, Galatians 3, 27. In a symbolic sense, we're baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ in Romans 6, verses 3 through 6. And we're baptized so that our sins will be washed away. And Acts 8, 37, the eunuch made the good confession. I believe that Christ, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we, we, we do all of those things. We, we hear the gospel. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. And he died on the cross for our sins. We repent of our sins and recognize we need to change our ways. We confess the name of Jesus. Make that good confession. And then we're baptized for the mission of sins. And that's not the end, folks. That's just the very beginning, the beginning of our Christian walk. I mean, that's where we have to sit down. We need to grow in grace and knowledge, uh, 2 Peter 3, 18. When we need to be filled with the knowledge of his will, Colossians 1, 9. So think about these things. I mean, Christians should be, and you can probably add a lot of things to this list. And so let, let, let's just pay attention to that. All right. Lord willing, be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.